This is a board for Napier's Location Arithmetic, described in 1617 by John Napier. Napier didn't just have bones, he also had Location Arithmetic. It's a square grid that you hold diagonally and it's labeled around the edges by powers of two. You put some cute little buttons on there, move them around, and it multiplies binary numbers. In his prime, John Napier had one big idea that changed mathematics forever. The logarithm kicked off a new paradigm of calculation that basically dominated science right up until the computing machines of the 20th century. Three years after changing mathematics forever, Napier published another book in Latin, Rabdologia, The Calculation with Rods. This very weird book describes three very weird calculating instruments. The first one is Napier's Bones. I did a video about that one, which somehow became my most popular video ever. Not my best work, but I don't argue with the algorithm. Check out the retorts, too. The second calculating instrument in Napier's books is the Promptuary. Check it out. These are Napier's actual illustrations from the book. The Promptuary consists of a bunch of strips of paper. Some of them have cutouts so you can stack them up and see some numbers through the holes. You gotta keep them organized so Napier describes how to make a big box to hold them in. Maybe I'll make a video about that someday, but I'm here for the third instrument. The Arithmetique Localis. Location Arithmetic. Mine is kind of a small one. My grid is 10 by 10. Napier's book included a big one, 23 by 23, that folds out. Look at this thing. I would love to have an original one, but the only original copy of the book I could find for sale is a bit outside my price range. That's more than the Curta. So I'll never have an original one, but I did manage to make my own replica that's pretty close to the real thing. Look at this. Click the links down there if you want a vector PDF that you can print out giant like this one. Or, hear me out now, if you want to chip in a few bones, visit my shop and buy a print. This one here came from my shop and I think it looks pretty good. I got other stuff too. Actually, I have a little confession to make. After I had this thing printed up, I found a source that actually gives the original size of this thing. And it's only this big. So this one is actually a ridiculous novelty giant one. I still like it. For the video, I'm going to stick with the smaller one. Really, any grid of any size will work fine. The bigger ones just let you handle bigger numbers. See, what we have here is a binary counting board. Counting boards are a very old bit of technology used mostly for adding. You put little counters on the board in various place values, and when you add them up, you got to carry them 10 for 1. I don't think John Napier used buttons, but he'd probably approve, right? These guys like buttons, right? Napier somehow realized that the counting board has special properties when you do it in binary. That's a system for numbers where instead of each digit going 0 through 9 and carry over at 10, you just make them go 0 to 1 and carry over at 2. It's a base 2 number system. Binary numbers aren't really any different from ordinary decimal numbers. They're just written differently. You can still count them one at a time. It's just you got to carry way more often and the numbers end up looking pretty different. There's really no easy way to convert back and forth between binary and decimal, but if you want to do it, it involves adding up place values. Like for this number in binary, these would be the place values, and I just add up the ones that have a 1 in them. Alright, you can see around the edges are all the powers of 2 written down, and these are going to be the place values for each digit. Actually, let's start with a simplified one. This is just like the first column from the big board. And if I want to represent, say, the number 138 with the markers, you got to figure out how to make 138 out of these powers of 2. For 138, that'd be 128 plus 10. So I mark the 128, and then 10 would be an 8 and a 2. All right. This is actually the same as writing the number in binary. That would look like this. And you can see the markers just go wherever the 1s are. Now, if you want to add two numbers, you do this like on a counting board. Let's do 138 plus 56. The 138 is already there. And then 56 would be a 32, a 16, and an 8. You put all the numbers down, and then we just got to do a little simplifying. Two 8s make a 16, two 16s make a 32, two 32s make a 64, and there's the answer. Well, that gives you the answer in binary. If you want the answer in base 10, you got to convert it back yourself. Anyways, 194. Now, let's get to the real deal here, the full board. Sometimes this is called the chess board. 
This thing is used for multiplying. The grid squares each represent a product of two numbers. Like this spot here represents 8 times 4, which is 32. I actually really like this thing. Here's the idea. Let's do like 36 times 13. Of course, you got to put them in binary, and I'm going to put markers for each number in the margins on each axis. I'm going to do 36 down here and 13 over here. Now to multiply these, you look at all the rows and columns that have markers, and you fill in like the crossings. You get this kind of rectangular shape. I'm going to put them in there, and then you can clear away the margins. And now the answer of the product is just the total value that all these little guys add up to, although it's not clear what that is at this point. But here's where Napier's big idea comes in. Check it out. Just because of the way the board is laid out, you can move a marker diagonally without changing its value. Like this one is 32 times 8, but this one is 16 times 16, and those are actually the same. So we can do some kind of sweet tricks here to simplify the answer. I'm just going to push every marker diagonally to the left as best as I can. And those diagonal moves don't change the total value. When I do this one here, they collide, but remember, like before, two counters in one spot carries one up to the next one. And since the side is the column labeled 1, these numbers are actually the values we want. That looks like this in binary, which is 468, which is the right answer. Once you know what you're doing, this is really kind of cute. Surely you've noticed by now that there's bigger numbers running up across the top. What's that all about? Well, sometimes when we slide diagonally, the counters bump into the top side. But your boy Napier thought of that too. Check it out. This counter here is 32 times 128. And if I move it as far as it goes, I hit 4096, which really is the correct value. So I can do really big products and just leave some of my markers at the top row. Like how about this one? Still got it. My board is 10 by 10, which means it can represent any answer up to 20 binary digits, which is around 52,000 in base 10. Napier's original board that came with the book can do up to 46 binary digits, which means the answer can be up to 15 decimal digits. That's pretty big. Napier's book explains the whole procedure pretty clearly. It has a real mathematical elegance to it. He goes on to present two other algorithms for long division and square roots, which are less successful in my opinion. I mean, they work okay, but they're complicated and inelegant, which to me really compromises the spirit of the instrument. Napier's original instrument has some extra stuff written on it, but remember, this was really just made as a diagram in the book. You're not really supposed to use this little thing. The two omegas are actually just illustrations for one sentence in the text, so the omegas don't really mean anything special, really. The dots also are in this just because the line down the middle is helpful when you're doing the square root procedure. These weird zodiac signs, again, they're just to help explain how you're supposed to hold the thing. He says, hold like the seagull thing close to you with the baby devil on the left side. This here means the whole thing is supposed to be stuck in at page 130 in the book. The book really is an interesting window into how Napier himself viewed this creation. From a modern point of view, the invention of a binary multiplier in 1617 is amazing. A visionary work of genius. Napier somehow realized that certain computational techniques work better in binary, which is a system that didn't even exist at the time. You know, Napier's logarithms dominated scientific computation right up until the mid-20th century. And what replaced them? Binary computation, which Napier also invented. But reading the book, it's pretty clear that Napier had no idea just how good his ideas really were. Even in the introduction, he presents this thing as a bit of an afterthought to the Napier's bones, which he viewed as far more important. And I really like the concept, but to be honest, I don't really find it easy to use. I'm sure I could get better with practice, but I get confused with the carries sometimes and I end up getting wrong answers. To me, pencil and paper multiplication is just a lot easier. Of course, the real star here is the invention of the binary system itself. But actually, Napier's way of thinking about his numbers is really very different from how we think about binary today. I didn't really get into it, but Napier had big ideas about this weird kind of number system that he created. He called them the location numerals, and he worked out a whole system for doing math with them. That's what all these letters are for. The location numeral number system. But I think we'll leave that for next time. Hoo-hoo, do I got a follow-up video for you?